What's up legends? Welcome back to another video. We are on the port in Monaco. Look at this. We've got, oh look, so first of all, we got a Bentley driving off. But look at these, I was gonna say boats, but they're more like buildings, aren't they? Right, it's insane. Every time I come here, you see these, they must be just the biggest boats. I mean, I know for a fact that they are the biggest boats in the world, but you just have them. Look, there's another one there and then another one behind. In fact, there you got three of these in the same place. Amazes me every single time. Anyways, we're not here to talk about boats. We're here to talk about this Lamborghini Performante Spider. And unfortunately, it's just started raining, which is just my luck. Get a spider. I'm, I mean, I've been very fortunate that I've driven pretty much every hurricane out there, apart from the Performante spider. Finally get one, and it rains. Fantastic. Can't complain. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. I was chatting to my friend who runs Stars Monte Carlo, a garage down here, which you guys probably know very well. We've done quite a few videos with them. Uh, and he said that he had this in stock, so why not give it a go? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go for a little drive I just wanted to show you the spec quickly before we get into the car obviously v10 mid-engine 640 horsepower car But this one has a beautiful spec flat black exterior matte black center locking rims These are pretty rare rims with yellow details all around So obviously standard carbon ceramic brakes on this with the yellow calipers Revisited front bumper with the ala system. So ala are the initials of the aer uh, active aero systems around the car so you can see these flaps here which will open and close according to how much downforce you need basically it's got really nice details like all of the forged carbon on the wing and the rear diffuser obviously the new twin exit exhaust on the perf unlike the quad exhaust that you have on the standard 610 i mean it's functional but it's also beautiful just stunning car and could this be the best lambo ever made could it be one of the best supercars out there and could it be a, the perfect replacement for my 430 scuderia i don't know let's see as you know we spoke about it in the last video i have you know wasn't particularly looking but you never know when you get in one of these it could always change your mind so let's hop on in i want to show you the interior as well so that's how you open the door handle. Door handles are cool because they, if you've got a big structure here, that will have an effect on the aerodynamics coming down the side of the car. So you see how the air is kind of filtered up through into this air intake. If you've got this big structure, that's gonna create turbulent air, which won't allow the wing to work as well. So really interesting how the handles are kind of put together. Full Alcantara interior with the forged carbon. I'm just gonna close it up so the rain doesn't get on the Alcantara forged carbon all over the place and the really nice yellow details continue in here with the pin striping down the middle the contrast stitching and alcantara all around on these new lambos everything is digital so the dashboard is fully digital on the evos you have another screen here to control all of your aircon uh, but on the perfs and standard 610s you don't fighter jet inspired start button if we press that car starts up and then you can see the digital dash which will switch according to which mode I'm in so the modes you can adjust right here so Strada is street standard mode sport so you can hear the exhaust valves open a bit and then Corsa where yeah the idle goes up and then the uh, dashboard changes even more anyways let's leave it in sport for now and look at this so sick listen to the magic button which is going to make a difference today is this which opens and closes the rear glass. So yeah, we're gonna make the most of that today because that makes a difference. So let's go for a drive, shall we? Rather than just blabbing about stationary. Right, let's do this thing. I've driven up to a slightly nicer road. Woohoo! Slightly nicer road. Is it still raining? Can I take the roof off? There's a few droplets, but I don't think it's raining now. Shall we risk it? Let's risk it. You only live once, eh? Let's take this roof off. Let's go into sport mode. Listen. You hear the difference? Try sport mode. Right, into drive. Manual. Let's see what this thing's got. One of the issues is how low, well, all Lambos are, but Hurricanes specifically are super low. So you need to put the lift up basically all the time. But the lift is up until 60 kilometers an hour. Usually it's like 30 or 40, so that's positive. Ready? Yep, yep, that'll do. Engine's nice and warm so we can get on it straight away. Ah, that noise, naturally aspirated V10. Wow. You kind of have to like hear it to remember how visceral and how many goosebumps an engine like this can give you. I mean this has to be one of the all-time great engines. It 
thing is unbelievable. It's so raw, it's so linear. Obviously with it not being turbocharged, you need to rev it out a little bit more than you would with a turbocharged car, but it's so linear. The power delivery is predictable. This is kind of what you want on a slightly damp surface like this. Four wheel drive. The double clutch gearbox is really smooth. I've got it in sport mode. If you put it in Corsa, which I'm gonna do right now, it knocks you in the back of the head, but it also can sometimes make the car lose a little bit of balance. Woo! Yeah, gear shifts are much more violent than Corsa. I mean, I have no idea if you're even gonna hear me. Oh no, it's starting to rain again, isn't it? No, 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 no. Okay, while we're going slow, let's put this roof back up. There we go. It's kind of counterintuitive. You need to pull it that way to put the roof up and push it that way to put it down. It doesn't really make much sense. But yeah, on the road, I prefer these. I've always, from the Hurricanes I've driven, not that I've driven millions, but from the ones that I've driven, I've always preferred sport mode on the road. I mean, Corso is, must be great on the track, but for the road, sport mode makes the most sense. The gearbox is fantastic because it means that it's just non-stop acceleration. You're not getting a cut out in the acceleration like you would in, for example, my Scud. You'd accelerate, and then it will cut the power, clutch in, change gear, clutch, uh, clutch out, sorry, change gear, clutch back in. And in that time, you're losing that kind of feeling of endless power, whereas with this, uh, it's relentless, and it's really satisfying, to be honest. And I was driving this up here thinking, what am I, what am I going to say? Um, because, you know, you want to say, obviously, it's a great car, and I love it. But you want to have, you know, downers, down points, negative points as well, because that's interesting, right? And as I was driving, I was like, I am struggling to think of any bad things with this car. It looks great. The only things I could think of were, there's not much practicality. Boots tiny, there's no space behind the seats. Who cares, to be honest? You're not really buying this car for that. Um, the visibility is not the best, but I'm saying that coming from a Porsche Turbo, which is basically the best in the segment. So, no biggie, really, again. Um, maybe the digital dash is a bit outdated compared to the latest greatest but i'm coming from a 2009 scuderia this thing feels like it's from 2042 it's fantastic i think so yeah maybe a bit low in the front but again you're buying a supercar who cares i think this is a fantastic car and would it be an interesting replacement for my scuderia Absolutely. I think it would be a fantastic replacement for my Scuderia because it's kind of running that same ethos of we just want to make a car which is going to make your hair stand on end. It sounds fantastic. It feels great. It's communicative and it's combining the modern technology and usability of modern supercars and that slap you in the face and give you that rawness of a GTO, a Mercy, a Scud, and all those kinds of cars. So it's such a great all-round package. I really, really think that because, you know, it's competing with what the likes of 720S is, um, Pista. Those cars are missing in what this has abundance of, which is character, and something which you can't really engineer into a car afterwards. So I just think it's such a good package. Now, the problem is, because it's such a good package, they're still very expensive. I think the Spider is the one to get, especially living down here, just because that noise, having closer access to that noise is amazing. Um, but the Spiders are just much more expensive. So, yeah, but what a package. These seats are also definitely the ones to get, the comfort seats, because the sports seats, half an hour in, you start getting, and I've, I'm not great with that. I've got quite a bad back, so you start to feel it kind of really quickly. I love the way this carbon, forged carbon looks. Oh, this is such a great car. The, the Hurricane normal, Hurricane normal, if there is such a thing, is already a fantastic car, but this just turns that up to like 11. And it's, yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, down is also V10, so I guess it drinks a lot, but again, what, what do you expect? What do you guys think? I mean, What's your favorite car in this segment? I just think these are 
pretty spectacular. Um, the, the Hurricane platform, you know, I've been lucky enough to drive the Evo, the standard Hurricane. Oh yeah, one thing you do need to get used to is, yep, go ahead, is the um, blink is on the steering wheel. Everyone's doing this now. Ferrari and now Lamborghini have gotten into it. It does take some getting used to. Right, now this is where the visibility can get a little bit tricky. The suspension's pretty hard. I mean, you can definitely feel that it's the uh, hardcore version. I mean, incomparable to like a 720S or Sports Series McLaren or 570S or something like that. Suspension's definitely pretty hard, but you know, you're probably not going to be daily driving this, which is why you don't care about the boot and you don't care about all these other things. But yeah, what they've managed to do as a complete package, you know, everything feels quality. You've got that slightly German kind of build quality to it on the inside, which is a fantastic thing. Yet you've got that Italian character when it comes to those 10 cylinders behind you. So my Scuderia is obviously going to probably sell soon and I'm not really looking to replace it, but yeah, this could be, if the price of these come down quite a bit, this could be a fantastic option. Uh, I've got a few, you know, Archie's had one of these, um, ooh, my voice, uh, Paul Wallace has driven around quite a bit in uh, Hurricanes as well, keep telling me how good they are, and every time I drive one, I don't know what it was, I wasn't like taken over by them for some reason when they first came out, but every time I drive one, I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it, and this is, until, I mean, the STO, that is going to be something else but it's basically the ultimate version for me, convertible, hardcore version of the Hurricane. Uh, I need to see how the STO will sound if with the new regulations it's not going to sound quite as good as this. But yeah, this is a pretty spectacular package. I know I keep saying that, I'm probably repeating myself like crazy, but very impressive. Guys, let me know in the comments if you're a fan of the Hurricane, if you've been lucky enough to drive one, if within this segment, you know, pistas, 720s's, uh, GT3 RS's, if this is the car you would pick to go for. And what do you think of this spec? We're gonna go back to Styles Monte Carlo now because I haven't been there in a while. I'm gonna drop the car off, so I'll film the outro there because sometimes there are some cool cars there. So I'm not sure what there is exactly, but we're just gonna keep the video going a little longer. So I'll join you back at Stars Monte Carlo. And we're back. We are back and you'll probably recognize some of these cars. Stars Monte Carlo, so I just drove the car back in town and I know I'm going to be ranting about how good it is all the time, but it was fantastic in town as well, pretty usable. It's annoyingly good, that car. Anyways, here's another car which is annoyingly good, is the Audi R6. New one, all blacked out, which is lovely. And then we got obviously these, these are the cars that will, you know, come and go and a lot of dealerships, you know, will put in the showroom all the fancy looking cars, but these are actually quite a lot of the bread and butter because they'll come and go um, a lot more than say a Koenigsegg Agera R, like that one back there that we did a video on a while ago. This we've also filmed two or three videos on, I think this Delara, full carbon, green, and then another RS6 right there. But that was so enjoyable, I mean, I know I've now been able to chill out a little bit and compose myself because I was completely, completely falling for, for well I have completely fallen for the Hurricane Performante, what a car! I knew it would be good, but I didn't think I would fall for it that much. It's fantastic. So I really enjoy these kinds of videos of being able to just give you my full uh, first impressions. You're kind of coming along with me on my first drive of the car. And uh, yeah, it's really good fun. And I hope you guys like it too. Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, of course that car's also because this is a dealership, it's for sale. So the Instagram will be down below as well. Stars if you guys want to get in touch. And a huge thank you to them for trusting me with the car as per usual. I guess I'll see you guys again very soon. Subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers guys. Bye bye.